Hey everyone, Paul Alex Sam, welcome to part 2 of our Hasegawa 124 for Lancia 037 video build. Part 1 only came out a couple of days ago, but I had loads of footage left over from that. In the first part of all the video builds, I normally try and get the car prepped, primed, painted, decaled and cleared. That's my normal goal. With this one, we're cutting the body apart. There was no way we were doing that. I had about another four hours of footage left from the decaling. Uh, and I knew I wouldn't get it in, and I think we'd have rushed through, missing out too much info. So here's part two, and that's why I told so quick. Now, the benefit of this is, now we've got a 30 minute video today that just covers decaling. A quick couple of minutes doing the wash, and then a clear cone. So I show the decaling a little bit more in depth. Um, talk about how I dealt with a problem with the bonnet decal, which has come a little bit more apparent with the 2K on. There's nothing I can do about that. Um, and I also show literally from start to finish the 2K process as well. Other than 10 minute off gas, uh, tack coats between, um, I literally show from start to finish, including cleaning the airbrush, uh, which is very, very quick with 2K, and tidying up the bench um, in preparation for leaving the room after 2K. I follow a very strict routine in here with my 2K um, from start to finish. So I show that more in depth as well. You may not like it, you may find it boring, but I thought, while we got the opportunity today, I get asked a lot of questions about the 2K, which I've covered in several different videos, but obviously not everybody watches all the videos. So hopefully it'll answer a few questions, you might get a tip or two, um, and if you've got any questions about it, just fire away in the chat down below, and I'll try and answer your questions as good as I can. So, without any more waffle, watch this bit of video, and we're going to jump straight in with the build. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notification to get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. Right then, so following on from our painting video, today we're going to do some decal. We've got our decal tray. On our heater warming up we've got our water brush we've got some cotton buds a tamiya knife for fresh blade our decal tweezers and our decal scissors as well so all the important tools we need the water brush we're literally using to apply the decal solution there's no fluid in them you can find a link to all these products in my list of products in the description of the video so we're going to start off with this big decal i always start off the largest decals first because quite often they can be the most troublesome so i like to get these out of the way um to know we've got plain sailing and through the rest so we've got this one on the bonnet and then two for the roof and then that's it pretty simple then now this one does prove a little bit troublesome um because it's a nice big bulge in the bonnet to get over so luckily the extra strong ump decal solution saved my skin because for a minute i thought it'd been ruined so you can see me there testing the decal water it's not quite warm enough so we give it a little bit longer so we pop back a few minutes later. Decal tray water is nice and warm now. This is just a coffee warmer. You can get these off Amazon. Again, there's a link in the video description down below. We've got our micro set for putting the decals in place. So we're just going to put this where the decal is going to go. Then we'll pop the decal in place. And the aim of the game is to get rid of any bubbles, creases... Get it to all lay down nice and flat and look painted on to the surface. So after not even a minute in the water, it's come off its back and paper. It's a large decal, so you need to take your time on this. So we pop it in place. We can line it up at the top and get it in the center. Ease the paper out below and then have a look. Make sure we're all lined up. And our troublesome crease is on the left-hand side near the top. So what we normally deal with this is we add a bit of more microset to the brush. And we'll brush the decal down, remove all the fluid from underneath the decal, set it in place, job done. Now sadly, that crease just didn't want to play ball. Now there's several ways you can do this. You can hit it with a hairdryer, which I'm not a fan of. Um, I'd rather let the decal solutions do the work. So I'm just mulling it over and I'm thinking, what should we do? And I'm thinking, right, well first off, let's get rid of all the excess moisture from all the surrounding areas. So we've got our cotton bud, and we're just gently removing any fluid from underneath the decal. Then we'll work our way up to the top, and we'll probably get rid of about 80% of all the creases. There's one or two left, but that one at the top left becomes rather troublesome, to the point I thought, uh-oh, 
I've wrecked this. Um, so yeah, solutions in hand. So when we start to set the decal, we'll start with the least strongest first. So we'll start with the UMP normal, which is a little bit stronger than Microsol. Um, then we can work up to the strong, which is a little bit sol stronger than solver set. And then we've got our extra strong, which I don't know anything on the market that's as strong I've used. Um, it really does set them down well. So there's our normal solution. So we're just going to pop that all over the decal. And my normal way to do this is just let it sit for five minutes or two, three minutes, then come back and see if it's conformed. Some decals respond really quickly. Some are a bit stubborn and need the stronger solutions. But our main goal is this top end here. As you can see, we get rid of the crease on one side and it reappears the other. So the way I do it is leave the solution on, let the solution soften the decal, and hopefully we can push the decal out. So we'll hop that down, a little bit of uh, tidying up there. Be careful if you spill anything on the bench, you don't want to put your decals in them, so mop up any spillages. So there we go, that's worked for five minutes. As you can see, I'm trying to roll down the crease and we got rid of most of it but unfortunately it did leave a little bit of crease in the decal so right back now I'm thinking oh no you can see that it's quite blatant what are we going to do so I'm hitting it now I think this is the strong now I've got on here and we're just hitting it this we'll let it sit for another couple of minutes come back and hopefully we can brush it out with the brush as you can see it's starting to conform everywhere else it's just this one troublesome spot that we're having trouble getting rid of. So what we've done now is we cut the decal at the top to get into that panel line because we know that's fine and that gets rid of a bit more decal that could prove troublesome. And what I've done here now is brushed all the edges across and we're about to hit this with the extra strong in the hope it will get rid of that crease that I've just gone over there. I'm looking at it, it is going. It's starting to go slowly but as soon as we hit it with the extra strong it literally melts it away and um, yeah we're all good so there we go there's the extra strong now so we pop it on now the important thing is the stronger the solution the less time you want it sitting on a the decal and b the paintwork it will stain the paintwork and it will stain the decal it's an acidic formula so that's exactly what it does it melts the decals in place so if you allow it to pool it will leave watermarks or even remove the paint if you're not careful um, and any of the strong decal solutions will do that so you can see I put a load on, I'm just going to let it sit for a minute. And we'll come back in, give it a brush, and there we go. It's just like magic, you can't really see it in the video. I'm just moving the decal over. Oh, we're split it a bit. You see, that's where that crease was. And this is kind of what I wanted now, because it got rid of the crease. So the crease split, and then I can flatten the edge. And then if we join it up properly, and I hit it with a cotton bud, it vanishes. It's literally gone. So, two birds, one stone here. We've got it all set down. The crease is gone. And like I say, just don't let this stuff dwell. Once you're happy it's set, you'll know it's set because it will literally melt the decal into the paintwork. So, as with the nature of paintwork, you're not going to get it perfectly smooth. It's not going to be a gloss finish. You will see the texture of the paint come through. And that's, for me, is why I know the decal is properly set. Um, if you don't set the decals properly, you can have issues with the decals lifting once your clear coat goes on. So I would also go, always go one above what you think you need. So if the decals are set with the normal, once they're done, I would hit them with the extra strong just for a few seconds. Brush it over a couple of times, let it melt them a little bit, and then wipe off the excess like I'm doing here very carefully. Roll the cotton bud, don't drag it. And by rolling it over, you're also pushing it into the surfaces or recesses. But you can see we've got a bit of pooled decal solution there. So we need to take care of that like that. There we go. Just wipe that away gently. Again, we just roll over that area there. And it's as if it's not there. It's as if magic. It now looks as though that decal was painted on. It's conformed to the surfaces perfectly. It's molded itself all around all those details. And it's really set itself into that paintwork so whew, panic time over um yes that was quite a stressful situation um i did start to panic there the first decal the largest decal the most prominent one and we started to have issues but good old ump decal solutions saved the day and that looks absolutely stunning fantastic decal all into all those recessed details really nice 
very very good so happy with that cart graph decals in this kit so they are high quality decals which always helps uh, and all i'm doing now is just going around making sure it's all conformed into all those areas so again two tricky ones on the roof these are a lot easier all you got to make sure on this is you get that s lined up at the roof scoop and everything's straight and equal uh, equally apart from each other that's the case just move it around to your happy get rid of all the creases like we did before these were really simple to do really simple the brush did all the work on this and then the solution set it absolutely fantastic so there we go we're just going around make sure it's all conformed and then and that's it it's the same process for each decal we put the micro set down we put the decal on it uh, we get the decal in place remove the excess water from underneath and then hit it with the normal strong and extra strong if required to set it in place remove any excess decal solution or fluid let it set come back have a look hit it again if you need to and if not move on to the next so we're going to crack on with all the others <music> After about three hours, we're all decaled. It's a stunning looking scheme. It really does look good. Now it's brought the car alive. The decals were fantastic, very high quality cartograph, and they went down absolutely 
brilliantly. So it's the next day, they've been drying overnight. So we've got our Tamiya black panel line wash. And we're going to add a panel line wash to all the recessed areas, all those recessed panels, uh, grills, etc. Anywhere it requires it, add it in. It's an enamel based wash, so it doesn't react with the lack of paints. And we just pop it on, let it dry, and wipe off the excess with a cotton bud with some odorless mineral spirits on. It's a nice simple job. We've gone with pure black on this because it's a nice dark car. So, pretty easy to see the black rather than putting grey, which would look too much of a contrasting colour, I think. In this case, put it on, just let the capillary reaction carry it. You can see it going down the door shuts there. Um, it's nice, simple, and easy to use. Sadly, as I always say, you can't really get it in the UK. It's not really imported. So, if you're going to buy it, you have to get it from the Far East usually. Um, it's getting harder and harder to get, especially in the current climate. But it's worth seeking out. So there we go. We've got a cotton bud. A little bit of odorless mineral spirits on it. I use Sansador. Or Sansodo without odour. From Windsor and Newton. Again the link for this is in the description down below. And gently over the decals. It looks like I'm applying oil pressure. I'm actually not. Just gently rub over the top. Remove all the excess. And a little tip. Once you're done. Have another look around. Because it's so easy to miss the wash. And trust me, your first coat of clear coat, you'll spot a bit you've missed. So always have a little look around. So we'll leave that overnight again to dry. We're here the next day. We're in the booth. We've wetted down our booth. We've got a fresh, clean filter in. It looks dirty, but it's not. It is actually clean. We're wetting down the booth to stop any dust. And we're going to 2K the body today. Now, with us having a standalone video today for just the decals and the clear coat, because I'm going to get these into part one, we could spend a little bit more time today showing the clear coat process so hope it doesn't bore you and hope you stick around and watch so we've got the gravity spain 2k clear here it's my clear choice we're going to mix nine milliliters of the clear to three milliliters of the hardener we're using a fresh pipette each time so we pour the clear into the medicine cup using the markings on the cup then use a fresh pipette to add the three mil of hardener then we give this all a good mix up get the chemical reaction started really good mix it'll go from a opaque color to a nice clear color get as much out of the pipette as we can we don't want to waste any throw that away and then we're here with our thinner and a fresh pipette again and we're going to add three milliliters of the thinner so pop that in make sure it's all out of the uh, pipette put everything all the lids back on put them safely out of the way and give it a good mix up again now i clear my spray booth out for this it's fully wiped down fresh filter my modeling cave is hoovered the night before so that any dust and that is already gone anything that's been put up in the air has settled again and as you can see we're double gloved i've got my left arm covered by a sleeve and we've got our full face respirator on again all these products can be found in the description down below and we're just putting our freshly mixed 2k through a 190 micron filter and then we pop it in the corner out of the way we've got our UMP apex we're going to dust it off with our anti-static brush all the parts remove any dust that's settled overnight and i find the anti-static brush does have fantastic anti-static properties to it it does help in the reduction of dust being attracted to the models so it's something i always do now it's kept off camera like I say, we've got our UMP Apex loaded up at 2K. It's um, the 0.35 needle. We're at 24 PSI. Uh, and we're fed from a Sparmax 610 compressor. Spray booths a branch vent um, A300S. And we're going to apply our taco first. So make sure there's nothing stuck to the body. Give it a blast over there first. What we're going to aim for now is to put a light coat all over. We're not looking for a high shine. We're just looking to get a sticky base coat down so just enough to get a bit of a sheen make sure we are meticulous and get everywhere covered so on this that will be the sides of the doors the roof all around the windscreen all inside the edges um, at the front and rear and at the very bottom of the sills as well so we're not hosing it on we're just getting a nice even coat. When the light catches it, you should see the kind of sheen that I'm going for. It's just enough that if we touched it, it would be tacky. 
So we've got all the way around like this, and all around the back, all along the bottoms, like so. Like I said, I normally cut this and don't show each coat, but we can today. Once that section is done, we'll move it to one side and cover it up. And we'll move on to the other part and go around the whole lot as we go. So everything's securely mounted. We've got on, on our U-Star part holder. They're all securely mounted on micro brushes. They're either glued in place, pushed fully home, or both. If I can get it through a hole, it will. And add a dab of glue to hold it on. Yabba dabba do. Sound like Fred Flintstone. We will do that. But again, same process, just on smaller parts. Be more aware they do paint a lot quicker. So be fully aware. Use the light to your advantage. That's how I spray. Angle it to the light and you'll see the actual paint going down. And all we want is a light sheen to begin with. If you get any hairs at this stage, you can pull them off like so. And there we go. Now everyone's going to have their own individual spraying style. Some people are probably thinking I'm too far away, but it's the way I spray and I get decent results. So I'm more than happy with that. The U-Star foam holder works fantastic as well. And again, parts like this, these have got many recesses and angles we need to get to. So you're going to have to be meticulous on how you spray. So I tend to go around the edges first. And then come from the back to the front. And then we'll do the outside edges, not the wheel arches last. So we've got three coats to do. We've got this tack coat, which we'll then leave for 10 minutes. We then got our next first wet coat, which I do as a decent wet coat, but not a full wet coat. You can still see imperfections in it. We we'll do that for 10 minutes, and then we come back and do our final wet coat. And what we see when we're done there is essentially what we will have when it's dry. So if you've seen the orange peel, you're probably not putting our 2K down, so give another light go. Um, and just take your time. It's easy to add more. You can't undo it any less. So that's the middle clams done. Sorry, the middle body shell is done, the rear engine clamp's done, this is the front section done now as well. It's the same process all the way along, just nice careful spraying. Make sure everything's securely mounted. Everything here is not going to fall over. Um, it's happened to me in the past and it's soul destroying. All this hard work to get to this part and then you drop it on something. And this 2K, once it's tacky, is a sticky, a, a sticky stick stuck with glue could stickily be it really is the stickiest stuff in the world and also a word of warning as you spray the coats and you start getting it on your fingers on your gloves be aware of keeping hold of parts when you put them down because that's caught me up before as well so make sure you put things down and you don't put it down and bring it with you again because it does stick to everything so these are kept under here the spray booth is kept running i have my mask on the whole time and I tend to bugger off to the computer for 10 minutes, have a little browse around Facebook, and then come back. This is 10 minutes later. The 2K has been left in the airbrush. It's a question I get asked all the time. It has no detrimental effect. This stuff's got about a 40-minute working window, and this will take us no more than 30 minutes to do it all in. It's probably a bit longer, to be fair, but I think 40 minutes is a safe uh, assumption. So this time we're coming in with a bit of a heavier coat. Again, we're not going for that full wet coat look. We're just getting enough paint down that on our last coat, um, the similar coat again, will give us our perfect 2K clear coat. And we're going exactly the same as before, covering all the same areas, the same angles, but we are putting down a bit more paint this time. As you can see, when the light catches it, it's a bit more glossy this time, but on closer inspection, it's not quite as clear as it could be. So just really, really take your time. And this is where it's important to have parts mounted securely because you need to pick it up, spin it round, have a look. You don't want to fall off. Now, again, at this stage, if you get a hair or something you can grab, now is your time to grab it. If you can see it and it's sticking out, grab it because it, this will self-level and the last coat will cover any slight imperfections. But just be very, very careful. The same with lifting the box up, make sure you don't catch any parts, nothing touches, move everything around, keep everything um, safely away from each other. And again, as you can see, that first tack coat, we've got a semi-gloss. Then once we're done with this, we'll have a half-decent gloss coat on it. What this is doing, each time, it's adding a tacky coat. That's why we leave for 10 minutes. The tackiness of the um, clear starts to dry. 
for the next coat makes it adhere better so you don't get runs because it's quite a thick paint this that's how it works it self levels it's very very tough it dries very quick but it needs a tack coat to be able to be sprayed on otherwise it would run everywhere so this is the idea of the separate coat and i'm just having a look make sure we're all equally covered i'm happy with that so we'll just pop that there we'll lift this up switch places and move on to the last part as well so like i say i'm showing this in real time the only thing i'm not showing is the 10 minutes between coats because that's just boring um, and this is literally how it goes top your airbrush up as you go and i had to keep my 2k covered up with a bigger cup a to stop any dust going in there and b to stop it falling over because i have knocked it over before and again i'm coming in just exactly the same be aware it's a smaller part it will get covered quicker so it doesn't need as much clear coat put down just take your time the apex is perfect for this job the 0.35 um, needle absolutely perfect i tried the larger one it did work well but i think the 0.35 is the perfect size for this really does work well and there we go onto the rear shell don't forget we cut this off the car so this will be a removable part at the end so hopefully that a little bit more visual interest to the model and again we're just going from side to side then the back to the front and then we we'll get the front edges and under the wheel arches too there we go quick visual inspection in the lights make sure we're all equally covered it's dark and that blew up absolutely beautiful now looks really good put our airbrush to away again pop this down as you can see, I'm putting it to one side because the bit that's loose under here on the paint bottle can then sit on top of that safely under the box. And again, we'll leave that for another 10 minutes, have a little peruse of Facebook or eBay, and come back. And like I say, the boost cap running, my respirator is on the whole time. And 10 minutes later, we're back. So again, up comes the box. Out comes the front. Make sure you don't catch it. It's probably the worst thing you could do is then drop it on the floor. Have a little look see how it's leveled. And you'll see it has leveled up a bit more. And this is the important coat now. What we see here is how it will dry. So we don't want to see any orange peel. But like I say, it's easier to add more. You can't take off if you put too much on. So I go around. I put a coat down. Once I've finished the whole model, I go around and have a look. If it needs another slight little coat, I go over it again. But don't put too much down because the runs will collect at the bottom and it can take a bit of work to get rid of. So just really, really take your time. Again, we're going around exactly the way. If you watch this, I'll spray this almost identical every time. I've got my system. Like I say, while this may not be the way everybody does it or the correct way, this is the way I do it and this is the way I kind of taught myself to do it. And again, we're just having a look, spin round, looking for any imperfections, any orange peel. If you do, just give it a little like, go over like that. It's a self-leveling clear coat. It does work absolutely fantastic. So we'll pop that in. And we'll get the other bits out. If this is a bit boring, I do apologise, but I thought, while well, we've got the opportunity, rather than skipping through it like I did, or well, normally do, sorry, would take the opportunity to show the whole process in one go um, for those who might have any questions or have not tried it before it's a simple process it just needs some safety precautions you need a really good spray booth you need a really good respirator my respirator is worth about 150 pounds the links to these are all in the description down below you need to make sure you keep your hands covered double up the nitrile gloves they are the one of the best safe options i believe for 2k but double them up especially on your left hand and keep any exposed skin covered up as well. Like I say, my respirator's full face. It's completely over my eyes, nose, and mouth. Very, very high quality. And again, we're just having a look. Making sure we've got all those angles covered. Just having a check. Looks good to me. Now, the bonnets or hoods, if you're uh, strange. Uh, are very funny they always seem um like you've got too much 2k on there but i think it's because of all the different angles it can reflect funny but even if you do put a little bit too much down it looks a bit plasticky or toy like 
when we come to flatter at the end um, flatter with the micro mesh and UMP polish system will take some of that toy light look off and again the last few bits to do exactly the same process just spray it have a look you can see orange peel go over it again like I say it's a self leveling paint so it relies on the ability to be put on thick enough to allow itself to level and again, be careful on the smaller parts. Once we're happy, pop them down. And again, be careful your gloves now. They'll be getting extremely tacky. And it will start to grip all the parts. And you'll see exactly how important that tech coat is when you feel how tacky those gloves actually become. Our last part. So we didn't use all the 2K, as you can see. The problem is every car uses different amounts. You can't mix the same amount. I normally mix 6mm clear, 2mm thinner, 2mm hardener. Uh, but I knew because of all these separate parts it might use a touch more. But I think we probably would go away with that amount to be honest. But I'd rather mix too much and have to throw a little bit away. than have to remix it at the end and have a risk of more dust or contamination in the clear coat. It's just one of those things. It's a consumable item. Um, look at it as a tool rather than worrying about, well, wasting a little bit. Waste not, want not. I know it's a terrible thing to waste things, but ultimately I'm striving for the best finish I can get on my models. So if I waste a little bit, it's not the end of the world. And to be fair, there's probably about two mil left over at the end. There wasn't a lot at all. So again, I'm just checking this, looking at it, thinking, does this need any more? I don't know. And I'm looking at it thinking, hmm. Once that settles for a good hour or so, 45 minutes, it'll get rid of any slight imperfections. It's already looking good. So you see me using the light there and just following it along? Yep, yeah, I'm happy with that. We'll pop that back in. So what I tend to do then is put them back in the box for five minutes, then come out for what I call my final inspection, where I'm actually looking around because what we have here now is literally how it will dry. This is what 2K is like. In two hours, this will be dust dry. So if any dust lands on it, it won't stick to it. And in about six to eight hours, it should be touch dry. So this is the time to have a look because you can always put another quick coat on should you need to. So we're going to visually inspect each section and make sure it's okay. And then we're going to pop them on my bench under the box again. As you can see, I'm just looking at that back section now and that rear spoiler, thinking, yep. That could do with another little bit there. Definitely. Just needs a little bit more to help itself level. So we'll move that out of the way. We'll grab our airbrush and just a quick pssst. There we go. That's enough. That's all it needs. Hardly needs any more. Just to go over. And that's it. I'm happy with how that looks. Pretty good 2K job. Now, clean up again. Something I don't always show, but we can today. So I empty the airbrush. We spray it away. Like I said, there wasn't a huge amount of it left behind. Uh, we've got some cellulose thinner, lacquer thinner in the airbrush now. So what we're going to do, I am literally spraying this out my door. Once I finished 2K and the window and doors opened, because the model's covered up, I've sprayed a bit out the door, and then we'll spray the rest into this kitchen paper. And we use that to get inside the brush and wipe around the exterior to get any of it spilled. And we do that a couple of times, and then what I'll tend to do is fill it up again, Spray it out the doorway again, just to give it a good run through. You do not want this stuff drowning in your airbrush, trust me. It will uh, probably permanently damage your airbrush. 2K is essentially an isocyrillate, so it's super CA glue derived. So what I tend to do is blow it through with a bit of cellulose thinner. I've got some good quality stuff in the top there, and that that I've just put in the cup is cheaper stuff. So we put a substantial amount in there, and we're going to drop all the working parts that I've had any 2K through them. So we pop our needle out, we'll wipe it on that tissue we sprayed cellulose on before, lacquer on before. Dip it in, wipe it off again, and we put it the sharp end up. Take off our rubber o-ring from the front of the airbrush. Dip it in, make sure it goes nowhere near the air valve, which it doesn't. Let it fill up with lacquer thinner and we'll just leave that to soak for an hour or two. 
what we'll then do is pull back our kitchen paper. You'll now see the true horrors of what live under my paint booth from several, several, well, sorry, eight years of painting now it is. My cave is eight years old, and you'll see this is well used. That's had some spillages over the years. So what I tend to do is wrap all the paper up into itself with the masking tape. We do a nice little package, and we roll it into the spray booth. I replace this every single time. Fold it over on itself, and again, grab it with my burr-like mitts. We'll then grab our nitrile glove. So this one's covered in 2K, so it's going to go inside out onto the um, filters. It might seem a bit weird doing this, but it works very well. So what we do, we get it halfway along. Then we'll come in with the other glove. Exactly the same. You see I'm doubled up on my left hand, not my right, because I don't get any 2K on there. Pull it over, and there's a nice neat package to throw in the bin with no 2K contamination and there we are that is it everything goes away it's ready to be tidied up for next time part two done and dusted there we go um decals looked amazing they came out absolutely fantastic part of the slight problem with that bonnet one which you couldn't see at all until 2k did and now you can see it a little bit it's one of those things it's just hard look uh, I was lucky to say that decal, the UMP decal solutions saved my backside. The extra strong just melted that decal right into place and got rid of a lot of the issues with it. So it was touch and go in here. Simon was in here with me and um, yeah, it was frustrating, but we got it done and it's all sorted. So that's good. 2K went down great. Um, you'll notice a lot of people are going to comment, oh, it looks very toy like, it's a bit thick. I always put my 2Ks down a little bit thicker than needed. Um, I like to have plenty of material to work with when I'm flattening because there's nothing more worrying than burning through because if you burn through the 2K, you've got to redo it. And that's a lot of prep, a lot of mucking around, and you're making it ultimately thicker than it even is now. So I'd rather have a little, add a little bit more in the 2K process and have more to work with. So I can sand a bit, check it, sand a bit, check it, and so on and so forth. That's how I work. So it looks a bit thick, uh, bear with me. It will look a lot better once we get it all polished up. But even after 24 hours, I've just put it together there. I've got some video here that you've been looking at while I've been chatting away here. Um, it's, it's, it's dry. Um, it will put a fingernail mark in, but it's touch dry, no problem at all. The Gravity Spain 2K Clear is absolutely phenomenal stuff. It really, really is. So there we go, that's it. So there we go, on a t-shirt, on a hat, tattooed across my knuckles. Um, we're all done today. Um, so we'll be back in part three. I reckon it's gonna be about a week. I've got a lot of work to do in part three. It's asking for me to do the interior first in the instructions, and I think we will go with that. But this is a bit of a strange car, because it's a Group B rally car, there's no real, there is a cockpit tub, but it's not your stereotypical one. So it's a bit different to work with. Then we've got all that wonderful chassis and engine to work with in part four and maybe part five. I don't know how long this one's going to be. So, yeah, bear with me. It's going to take a while to do this one, but you've got two to watch. So, <laughs> there you go. That's it. So, there we are. Um, as always, check out Intensive Scale Model Facebook page and forum, uh, umpretail.com. You can get all the products, well, nearly all the products I've used in my videos today. And there's a big long list in the description down below of everything I use in my videos. Check out the Live at the Bench page for all the live show news, the Off-Air Hangout page for all the Off-Air Hangout links, my Paul ISM page and Instagram page for all my personal modelling work and updates on this all go on there. So you can see these in real time as they go up. So more on Facebook. I use Facebook a lot more. Um, but again, links for all this in the description down below and the ISM group build page is all linked down there as well with a calendar of all our proposed group builds through the year. If you've watched this far, well done. Let me know the name of your first pet. I like asking these questions because not only does it show who's watching to the end, but I like hearing the answers, to be honest. I find it quite interesting. There we are. So thanks for watching today. I'll catch you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.